I don't think it shanked any. Hi, I'm John, and my internet is no longer delivered once a week by horse and cart. And I'm John, and I aspire to be a mountain hermit. And I'm not John, and welcome back to Would John Rather. It's just Would John Rather. That's all it is this week. I hope you've missed us. We've uh, had a bit of a journey recently. It's been interesting. But we're back. Would John Rather. So I've got I've got a bit of bit of housekeeping I'd like to start with. Um, John with an H, first of all. It's been a while since we've asked you, has your wife escaped again recently? Is she safely at home? Uh, I feel like this is a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> just just Isn't listen, it always? listening back and thinking back, she tends to escape a lot and ends up rummaging in skips or hiding on islands, sicking animals on you or... You're, you're standing Feeling by pets. the front, yeah, you're, you're, or you're standing at the front door hissing at her so she can't get out. I'm just checking. All, all, everything okay at home? Well, as far as I'm aware, she's she's uh, in in the flat, but uh, I've shut the door to do the podcast, so she's currently unsupervised. <laughs> so <laughs> Sh- who knows? Schrodinger's wife. She's currently in in the flat and out of the flat. But I won't know until I have a look. <laughs> yeah. If you hear John out of breath during the podcast, it's because he's frantically running around his house while recording, just checking where she is. Wife, why are you on top of the bookcase? Stop swatting <laughs> ornaments off. <laughs> oh, no, no, she searches for cat. She isn't a cat. No, he's the cat, but also a bird. Also a bird. Also a bird. Anyway, yeah, so this is Would John Rather. Once again, we're back to... A podcast where I ask two people called John who spell it differently, would they rather questions? And they answer. It's a lot simpler to explain in this context, so let's make the most of it, shall we? Are yes. you ready Shall we jump right in? To dive right in. No. I'll give it a go. I, I need a sabbatical from the show. What for? I need to go to India to find myself. But long story short, I'm probably going to go out there, find out I'm still a dickhead, and then come back and still do the podcast. <laughs> so you need to find yourself. John needs to find his wife. I need to find something. So I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I am sat in the pitch black. I have 29% battery, which I'm running the internet off of my laptop. My laptop should be fully charged. So there is actually a timer on how long we've got to record this. So... We're going to try and be succinct to the point, and if you've been listening for the past 23 weeks, you know that's impossible. So, as John already said, we'll dive right in. Would you rather have it publicly known what your regular fetish is, or have a secret, very strange fetish? Um, I, I feel no shame, so public fetish. Moving on, next question. <laughs> secret is better secret is better next question <laughs> yeah. you, come on are, are you, 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 you come on guys come on <laughs> number two I'm, I'm getting the impression that John wants us to skip right past this because he's clearly got something to hide so we'll treat this like we normally do well, no, we, we can go on about it what what fet- what fetish do I have to have? This no, 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 no. no. You're, you're clearly clearly uncomfortable talking about what your public fetish is. I'm not going to force you, so we'll do what we normally do after the first question. If you'd like to uh, tweet at him, at John, J-O-N would rather, his H is a secret, unlike his fetish. If you tweet at him directly, he will message you publicly and tell you exactly what it is. H is my fetish. All right, you want to know about it? H's are my fetish. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the main H, Twitter. H from Steps is locked in my basement <laughs> right now. <laughs> the the main Twitter is Would Jay Rather? Would Jay Rather? You can email me your fetishes, I guess. Why not? And John? Uh, you can tell me your fetishes by sending them via Morse code using an Enigma machine. You did an Enigma machine last week. Oh, did I? Yeah. Right, I better better do that again then. 
Uh, we don't have time for this, John. Shit. I wrote a I'm, list. I'm not prepared. Fax machine. Prepared. <laughs> you, Dead letterbox. Can, Come on. <laughs> you can fax me your fetishes whenever you like. Fantastic. It's uh, John with an H would rather. John would rather. Send him your fetishes. Send him send him pictures of your fetishes. Send send him pictures of your fetishes drawn with a Sharpie onto a fax machine. To his anyway, work fax. To his work fax. <laughs> anyway, okay, question two. We're going to do four this week. Handshake or hug? Hug. I would give you, good hugs. Yeah, would you rather give slash receive a handshake or a hug? Well, obviously, I'd much rather give and receive handshakes because... You don't like people. <laughs> it's not so much that, but the, the people that... Hand, hands are I his do. fetish. <laughs> <laughs> the people that I meet, I want to do business with them. And generally, the international sign for completing a business deal is doing a handshake. I reserve, I reserve hugs for those who are nearest and dearest. It's, it's and interesting that that's like the international sign. Is it the oldest sign? Because the oldest business in the world is prostitution. So that would be a weird end to that exchange. Well, pressing flesh is what they do. It's, it's the job. So let's, I don't think it'd be that bothered by it. Let's not turn my business ventures into smart. <laughs> <laughs> I, sex sex um, doesn't have to be smart, John. It can be classy. There's, my business has nothing to do with sex or <laughs> fetishes. Uh, but se- but your sex is your business, is that correct? <laughs> yes. Yes. I <laughs> got you with the old uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. <laughs> <sighs> oh. See, most of... Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that most of your... Uh, your, your time with your wife might start off with a hug and then it ends up being your business. So then it turns into hug, a handshake. Hugging you yeah. <laughs> at the very end. Just, uh, just, I, I don't, I don't tend to shake many people's hands. If I'm honest, I, I probably do hug more people than I shake hands with. Um, John, when we went around the natural history museum the other day, what was the last thing I did? Uh, run around on a, Lawn, pretending to be a dinosaur. No. Shit, shit, we, that was when me. We, <laughs> when we got to the platform, I hugged you goodbye. Ah, right. So yeah, um, I do, I do, I'm a, I'm a huggy, tactile, emotionally sensitive person, and I, I just see handshakes as, as a business transaction. It's oh, very well done, cubicle number three. Thanks for your monthly quarterly reports. Oh, well done. And it's 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 just a token offering. It's not actually sincere. It's it's just a it's a token gesture. But where Bruce, would the world be without quarterly business reports? I need that quarterly update. Otherwise, I'm not going to know. Otherwise, I'm not going to know what to work on in the next quarter. I'd rather people didn't didn't bullshit me, and if they were happy with my work, tell me they're happy with my work, rather than oh. Well, well done. Here is a handshake. I, I don't work. I don't work in an industry where where handshakes achieve much, because um, normally my hands are covered in grease, oil, metal shavings. Yeah. No one's touched my hands anyway. Well, what, all, what what I've heard from both of you, and I'm not on either side yet. I mean, for regular listeners, we already know that I know who's won. But for, for, for the sake for the, for the sake of uh, for continuing on continuing on this conversation, the discourse. It sounds like it's very split between business versus pleasure. So, I mean, what's 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 the best camp to sit in? Because we're we're all we're all. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say metrosexual, but I don't remember a time when any of us have ever said hello or goodbye to each other using hugs. Back in school, back in sixth form, we're a very huggy group of people. Obviously, you can't do that in a professional context, but I mean, I'm. I'm a manager where I work and I hug most of the people I'm with. The only people that don't 
tend to hug is your older men with older men. Or customers. No, even customers. I've had I've had hugs with customers, with the brides, with the grooms, with people that have come in for anniversary meals. It it depends on the situation, but it, it's an obligation of staying at the hotel. You, you have to hug me because I just need human any human contact. <laughs> oh, little Matt in the big city just needs to feel loved. <laughs> the problem is in I Liverpool. Still, I... I like hugs, but in Liverpool, you're likely to walk away from a hug without your wallet in your pocket. So there's a lot, there's a lot of scaffers out there. I don't, I don't know if any of them have nicked, nicked a phone to listen to the podcast with, but you might be in trouble. No, it's quite, it's quite funny. Obviously, we, we've brought it up before. I manage a hotel, and people always try and make jokes because we, we're always losing hair dryers. Remotes is a good one. Occasionally, light bulbs. Very reminiscent of Ross in that episode of Friends. But everyone goes, oh, of course you're missing all that stuff. You're in Liverpool. And you go, well, hang on a sec. We're a hotel in Liverpool. How many people that live in Liverpool are staying in a hotel? <laughs> I think you'll find it's all the people that aren't from Liverpool that are nicking stuff. So I don't think it's a scouse thing. I think it's a, ah, it's an English thing. If it's not nailed down, it's in the suitcase. But I, I mean, I obviously meant the, the stealing thing in jest just because they might triangulate my IP and get me. <laughs> <laughs> They've, they've already, think, they've already stolen my electricity and my power. God knows what else they could take from me. So you're saying that the Scouse public are against you podcasting? I just think there's something to be said for that old-fashioned camaraderie that you get between two gentlemen who who meet and are not allowed to display any outward signs of affection and therefore have to shake hands to end the conversation. I just think... I'll tell, I'll tell you what, John, you can keep your stiff upper lip and I will raise you a hug because everyone likes a hug. Even if you, you're not spongy and large like myself, everyone still appreciates a good hug no matter what shape size you are. Whereas there's a secret etiquette towards shaking hands to decipher who is the alpha male in the situation by... The length of time you grip, the actual pressure you grip, how high up the uh, the palm you go. It's, it's, well, you you know that I'm a competitive. A you know that I'm a competitive guy. I enjoy that competition. I hate it. If I, it just robs him it the wrong way, because I've I've got quite big palms and quite small fingers. There's a really weird hand ratio going on over here. Um, so I tend to find like it's almost just my fingertips gripping the edge of someone's hand at some points, depending on how big they are. And it's no, no one's going to want that. Your hands I, do I look like a child quit. through them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thank you for um, outing me as a freak. And I, I, I do mean, remember. The, uh, sorry, I was just going to say remember, there's, sorry. there's there's the there's the other time. There's the times when you go for a hug with somebody and then instantly regret it because you just it just feels awkward and and you just go oh I wish we'd shook hands. Never, no one ever shakes hands in my life. Never ever has that happened to me in my life. John. Nobody's However, ever shook hands and gone oh I regret that handshake. But if you get halfway through a handshake and go nah you can bring I, it in for a hug. I felt obliged to give someone a handshake once um it was a bit awkward I, I shook the hand and the hand was incredibly sweaty i would never have felt someone's sweaty dirty palms against mine if they give them a quick hug no you give them a quick clothing, hug and they would have rubbed, it's fine. rub they'd have rubbed their sweaty hands all over your clothing and in your hair in See, my I, hair <laughs> I, it's a passionate hug i, I went to give a bride at the hotel I was leaving halfway through the wedding because I was on the early that day and it was only a small wedding and everything else oh no it wasn't sorry they weren't getting married in our hotel she was just staying in our hotel but I looked after her the night before taking her up you know fears and stuff in the morning made sure that she was like properly excited for a wedding she went to go and did leave did her hair did her makeup helped her she, like yeah um, but I went to go <laughs> give her a hug and she just went for the handshake because obviously she was being a bit more, I don't know, distant or whatever. 
So I panicked. Dude, she like, has boyfriends. Yeah, but I panicked. Went, <laughs> oh, went for the hug. She went for the handshake. So I panicked, grabbed her hand, and just kissed her hand. And I felt so <laughs> cringy afterwards. I was like, I'm not a 19th century bard. <laughs> What on earth is going on? And it felt awful. Whereas if someone goes to it, everyone's been there where someone's gone for a handshake and the other person has slapped the hand away and gone, don't be silly and gone for a hug. The, yeah. per- the person, if you do that with someone and they go away from it going, oh, actually, I didn't want a hug. There's something wrong with them, not with you, because you've tried to extend that olive branch of friendship. I guess it's safer to go for the for the handshake and then upgrade it than to you know there's no backing down from a hug unless so except I've, in your I've scenario. Got two points, John. I've got two points. You have just said upgrade into a hug. Why don't you just give top flight service all the way and hug people? Number two is handshakes are very dangerous. <laughs> have you ever been about ten years old? Someone offers you a handshake, you go shake their hand, and they whip their hand straight out the way, and they go na 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 na, and then do the old thumb on the nose, wiggly fingers, laugh, like jokes, jokes at your expense because you thought I was going to be nice to you, but I'm not because I'm a spiteful ten-year-old. There you go, too slow, and then you're left there hanging in the breeze. I just, I, it's, it's dangerous. I just, I just, I just want to be caught out as an adult. Like I said at I the beginning, I have to re- reassess my life if that happened to me this stage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I reserve my hugs for nearest and dearest i'm not some sort of hug slut I'm not just giving it out to anyone you've got to earn that hug i'd much rather give you a handshake to begin with as is true with your standoff nature <laughs> fair enough i appreciate we we can't all be as outgoing as friendly as me but i just i beg humanity to try just raise, raise your level of, of acceptance and uh and friendliness towards your fellow man. I think it's. I think it'd be a good thing if we if we tried to embrace it and embrace each other. I, I mean, I think I think we'd we'd all do better as a as a species if everyone just shook hands as well. You know, yeah, that would be that would be good when you got home from work all day. How's it going, wife? Good, and you? Yeah, we'll have a handshake. No, I'm going with hug. I'm going well, with hug. Getting, imagine getting on a bus and shaking everyone's hand. That would just bring a smile to everyone's face. So hug everyone. And no. also, you can you can get on a bus now and shake everyone's they might hand. Have bugs. There is nothing stopping you getting on a bus now and shaking everyone's hand. You choose not I to. Maybe I will. Well, I will, though. I will. Well, either way, I'm, you don't. I see a video. You don't do that, so I'm going with <laughs> hug. Just because... Aww. It is, as you said, it's an upgrade from a handshake. It would be less awkward for you to hug your wife, girlfriend, partner, children, parents and <laughs> friends, and no. occasionally have to hug someone that you're doing business with than it would be to have to handshake all of those people. If I had a son, I'm only going to ever shake hands with him. You're going to give him such such a complex. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why you have to He's going to grow up to be weirder than you. Hmm? I don't know why you had to specify son. Just child. Are you saying there's something wrong with same-sex hugs? No, I'm just saying that a father-son relationship should be... <laughs> Strictly professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, standoffish. You should be sent to boarding school until you're 16 and then you come home and call him sir. John, do you uh, do you hold your son to verbal agreements? A, a man's word is 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 everything. Um, you you promised you eat carrots. He, he asked if he could have some sweets a couple of days ago. I said, yeah, mate, you can have a sweet. It turns out he'd eaten all the sweets, so I couldn't hold my promise to him. I felt really bad, but it was his fault because he ate all of the sweets. <laughs> tis tis better to <laughs> ask for forgiveness than beg for permission. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I live by that rule as well, so I, I can't blame him. Yeah. The thing is, you ate all of his he, sweets. He put... No, not this year. But it's it's quite nice that you didn't put a, a requisition form in for 
sweets and then I'd hand it back to him going, you weren't specific enough and I don't believe there's money in the budget. Try yes. again next day. Cool. <laughs> I've, I've performed the stock take and there appears to be a deficit of uh, Tic Tacs and Curly Whirlies. Therefore, all, all sweet privileges will be revoked until uh, the new fiscal year. <laughs> anyway, time for question three. Would you rather be Peter Pan or his shadow? Shadow. I'd rather be Peter Pan. Because... I'll oh, grow up, John. Of all the people on this podcast, I'm the least likely to be Peter Pan because I'm the oldest and most haggard. So I'd like to be a boy that never grow old. That'd be quite, yeah, it'd be quite nice. People would know who you are, and I could I could snatch children away and add them to my small <laughs> army of wooden <laughs> creatures and make them fight a pirate captain on my behalf. With my tiny little pathetic dagger and my fairy minion. As, as we What's just, Shadow going to do? As we just said to John, there's nothing stopping you snatching children. You, you, can, <laughs> you can do that as an adult. Yeah, but I can't fly. Ah. It's like, you know. It, it'll be really, really handy. Like, they're getting wise to the to the van with the, with the dark windows these days. And you haven't got any sweets left. We've been over that. <laughs> yeah, no, no sweets. Hey kids, do you want to live forever and fly? Yeah, right. Boom. From my from my recollection of Peter Pan, Peter Pan's shadow was actually more up for having a good time and having fun than Peter Pan himself. Peter Pan occasionally lands and tries to bring some sense to the disorder, and the shadow just goes nuts and flies around the room and doesn't want to be caught. And I just think that's the kind of... Oh, someone's caught a parrot. I think the police want to me. <laughs> For any of our younger listeners, that is what is known as a house phone. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. One day I'm going to have to explain to my son what dial-up was. <laughs> Sound like someone's raping an emu. One one picture every five minutes. One picture every five minutes, and you have to get off the phone if your mum wanted to speak to your auntie. It's a horror story you tell your fourteen-year-old son when he's going through the change. Going through the change. That's not the right way to phrase it. <laughs> Menopause at fourteen. <laughs> when I when I was your age. I either had to wait half an hour for a single picture of a woman on the internet or find it in a magazine in the woods. You have no idea how lucky you are. <laughs> ah, yeah, so yeah, I, my argument to the spotlight is if, if you start doing my head in flying around the room causing much on, I'm just going to turn on a torch and banish you. Turn on a torch and banish me? Yeah, a torch yeah. is what's going to create the shadow. You mean you want to turn off the torch. The absence of light is the absence of a shadow. Not if you're in a really, really well lit room. You just exist as two small puddles underneath my feet. <laughs> but but then the shadow escapes and runs off. Doesn't require you to be there. What? I, do, do I need a shadow to carry on with my normal life? No. Go go do one. Go fly away and not be able to talk to him because you don't have any vocal cords, John. I'm fine with that. Are you sure? So you're not you're, I mean, you're not going to say anything when I'm I'm child snatching, and flying around the room, stealing I mean, other people's Newfoundlands. I mean, it's not going to help with the podcast if I'm not talking. But yeah, and I'd be fine with that. Peter Pan did his first attempt to reconnect with his shadow was ah, what's sticky? I know. I'll use soap. That was always a weird one. <laughs> hey, I've I've moved on since since then. You have, and that's that's how I'm going to call it. I think the shadow was a bit more free spirited, a bit more interesting, quite lively for someone who wouldn't speak. And just, I'm I'm basing this a bit on who the two of you are. John with an H, he does remind me a bit of Peter Pan's shadow. <laughs> John without an H, you do remind me of Peter Pan, but more of Robin Williams as Peter Pan when he's a lawyer and he's forgotten. 
I don't want to take that as a negative. I just think we need to remind you. We need to introduce you to Rufio. Mate, I'm going to snatch three kids tomorrow just to prove you wrong. <laughs> East Anglia. That it's all your fault. East Anglia missing children. Call card left behind just saying the Lost Boys. <laughs> The, the the fens are very quiet and eerie with nothing but um did um did he on the uh wind and people graffitiing third star on the left onto <laughs> onto uh, garage blocks but in like really like sharp horror movie Jason and Halloween and all of that kind of like writing with a like a dagger into a tree I don't have any tattoos shadows can't have tattoos. Which is why I've never had one. Oh. Just, it's impossible. You've had many nosebleeds. Um, shadows don't have blood, so how does that work? I don't know. There's, not, there's lots of things I can't explain. And the question was, would you rather be, not are you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I've gone with his John shadow. Wins. John wins. Woo! Wait, you, wait, you said you're going to go with me, not the shadow. No, I said I'm going with the shadow. Oh. See? You're a let down. You're, you're just too much like a child. You weren't listening to what you were being told. I'm just actually nine kids now. Are you happy? This is yeah, all your fault. I am. That's probably why the shadow wanted to get away from him because he's a felon. <laughs> he doesn't want to be an uh, accessory what to the human life as a shadow. What what worth do you possess? As a shadow, a shadow's even real. Yeah, you're just an optical, all right, you're just an optical illusion. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway. Don't... This, this this will feed in quite nicely into our fourth and final question. Would you be... Oh, I think I might have sneezed. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it her first. Not Johnny's <laughs> going to sneeze live on the podcast. Oh. <laughs> okay, add, that add, was... add one to the sneeze count. Um, would you rather be an emo or a goth? I'd rather be a goth. I think emo... Is a passing fad, but goths will live forever. <laughs> That's what they think as well. Yeah. I mean, they've already... Gothic architecture started, you know, a few hundred years ago. And it's still going strong. It tends, yeah, it tends to be quite better quality than today's standards of building. Um, so I think that's a real positive very nice John uh, I'm, I'm going to go with being an emo because there's a lot of people that I know that uh, used to be emos and now they're informed very um, very normal socially acceptable adults and yes as much as say being emo is a phase it was a bit of a cool phase I'm not, not going to lie the, uh, the, the emo movement was the first movement that is publicly said, look, it's all right not to be okay. And it was about expressing emotions. It was also about um, screamo music, which there was a lot of raw passion and emotion in those in those in those bands and in the songs and in the lyrics. And there are certain uh, bands and songs that you know I, li- I listen to now that haven't dated so well, but at the time I couldn't think of anything better um, because it resonated with my with my teen years. I wasn't a particularly rebellious teen. Because I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bleach my hair. My mum and dad were like, yeah, all right. I'm gonna grow my hair really long. Yes, yeah, fine, do it. You're gonna get tattoos. Yeah, when you're 18, that's fine. Do what you want. I was like, oh, I've got, I've got nothing to push against. I've got zero teenage angst. But you know, it was cool. It was, it was very of its time. There are. I just think there's. I just think there's so much more to gothic culture than there is to sort of emo culture. Um, you know, it's it's got a whole genre of literature. I mean, you've got everything from 
Dracula to the portrait of Dorian Gray. I mean, it's 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 got architecture, it's got literature, it's I mean, there is uh, the, the a list musical is side to goth. The, the right, list, so if, yeah. If I read Edgar Allan Poe once, does that mean I'm, I'm part of the Gothic society? No, I think joining a Gothic society is a lot is a much bigger commitment than just reading one author's contribution. But have I got to wear a Marilyn Manson hoodie like all of the other goths, or can I be an emo and wear ridiculously tight, very bright coloured t-shirts and skinny jeans? And be an individual rather than being in the uniform of all black and then not make direct eye contact with people and hang around in shopping centres in groups of three or more because we feel vulnerable by ourselves. I mean, I think, I think that could apply to either. I think there probably was a bit of a gap in sort of, there was a lot of missed opportunity for new goths during the emo years. Because I think a lot of people that would have become goths chose to become emos instead, and I think I think there probably is a bit of a blip. Uh, it was a real few down as a downward trend in, but you know, if you look over the course of history, as I said, I mean, the, ha- the Houses of Parliament are an excellent example of Gothic architecture. The Gothic movement has such huge you know such these these achievements can you name me one mainstream gothic architect what 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 do you mean by mainstream isn't it the whole point of being goth that it wasn't mainstream okay na- name one gothic architect that uh that is worth noting uh, well, the architect for Parliament was uh, a guy called Charles Barry. Boring. And, and Augustus. Being in New York, it was all about supporting your local music scene. The and local music scenes nowadays are dying, and it's it's all because we don't have emo kids anymore. Who remembers going to the Met Lounge? Who remembers going to the Radius? Who remembers going to the Junction? But there were goths and there Portland before Arms. there were the Portland Arms. There were Classic goths at all of those. Cambridge. There were goths that at all of those venues before there were emos, and there will be goths there long after the emos have gone. Hiding in the shadows. <laughs> Are you quoting the Rasmus at us? <laughs> oh, they goth oh, or we don't know. Oh, oh. I don't just, I don't know. There are three music venues in across the UK that close down every single week. And that's that's a shame uh, because of uh, there just isn't the support for them anymore. But sort of 2006 to 2010 were were really good years for uh, for local music. I remember endless Saturdays and Fridays, like people going, "Oh, I'm going to this gig. Oh, I'm going to that gig." A lot of them were emos, um, or a lot of them were sort of more emo bands that like, normal common folk, as I was at the time. Would uh, would actually think about going and seeing, um, and that's that's what you want. You want your sense of community. Um, it's it's nice to be in a in a larger group all supporting the same thing, rather than sat in someone's bedroom smoking and painting your nails black and talking about architecture and literature. It sounds well, like the argument that you're having is: Would you rather be a staple or a fad? I mean, goths have always kind of been there in the background, and I think the whole emo movement highlighted them a bit more because they were quite similar. I know before the term emo was around, they were kind of, before it went full emo and it was like bright colours and all that kind of things, it was a lot of similar styles, but a lot of black and white, and they were referred to as baby goths. As someone, as the emo movement was starting, I was not involved i wasn't consulted on this decision i wasn't into the scene i wasn't into the music i wasn't into any of this so i saw it from the outside and i went oh what's what's happening these goths are wearing less less 
leather and they seem a bit more active. It was like, you know, when you see a lizard when it gets warmer and suddenly has a lot of energy. That's what emos were like. And I was like, these got these goths are moving too quickly. And then <laughs> they evolved into what we now know as emo. And it's it's now past, like it's non existent, whereas goth is still there. So it's kind of that consistent versus that fad. Do you want to be a deck of cards or do you want to be pogs? Are you Marvels or Tamagotchis? Anyway. Tamagotchis. They may not last forever, but the uh, the stars that burn the brightest aren't around for the longest, are they? Are people going to remember, like, mid-2000s for emos? Goths are just droning on in the background. Goths are like fern of the forest. It's been millions and millions and millions of fucking years. Ferns have been around forever and they're still really goddamn boring. Dinosaurs were fucking amazing and they didn't last forever. <laughs> but, but how much we're not going to last would... forever I don't think life would exist at all without ferns they're just there in the background doing their photosynthesis and I think that probably helped to you know, spur on life overall and I think I think the same can be said for gothic culture in that it's, it's produced some incredible things over the hundreds of years. You know, massive cathedrals, castles, very inspiring buildings. And, you know, I think it's always going to be there. And it's always... The, it's going to be underappreciated. No, I mean, come on. Some of, some of the biggest tourist attractions in our country are gothic buildings and you know you know what the attraction i'm thinking of is uh is london attractions or letters to patrick bateman <laughs> fond memories fond memories of a little little old band called taken from every day just i you know taken from I'm, every day i'm really Weren't, weren't they basically, if you if you rejig all to the members of rounds, but most of the band members have taken from every day, weren't they the members of Automaton? Uh, yeah, pretty much. And don't Automaton, aren't they the ones that sing our theme song, which they kindly let us use? They, they are indeed. Ah, interesting. Uh, yeah, and... They, uh, they as Taken Every Day slash um, Automaton played a set in a barn a few years ago that we all at, and that's still one of the best nights of my life. And that was supplied by some ex emos. But so, let's be honest, the whole emo movement was basically just inspired from gothic culture. It's just, you know, it's it's like it's trivium to Metallica. That's that's what that's what emos are. They're just like just trying to have a go at doing what other people had already done. <laughs> Imitation Sorry, is a serious I, form of flattery. I, exactly. I, Emo I love, is a is a flattery of goth. I love that emo started basically a whole or emo is whether one influenced the other or whatever, but is a whole genre of music and you wanted to compare one thing to another and rather than comparing like a famous gothic band to an emo band, you compared, you compared a metal band to a quite good metal band that then as they got older decided to try more and more to imitate the metal band you're talking about. And I don't think emo was about imitating goth. It was taking all of that dark side of the goth, but almost flipping, it was almost like the anti-goth. The emo it music was pretty much anti-goth. There's there's a big difference between Aiden and Marilyn Manson. Yeah, Marilyn Manson was better. Mm. True. Mm. Who who I mean who's who's going to be remembered at the end of the day? No one's going to remember Aiden. They're going to remember Marilyn Manson. People are still People talk are... about him. People have blamed him one for all who was controversial. For... Yeah. I'm. Under Oath. I'm not going to win it with Under Oath. How good were Under Oath? 
They are very good. They weren't emo. They were emo. Um, they were emo. Very emo. Um, it's very difficult because I, I mean know, it I'm is. My nerves. My nerves were better. Yeah. Um, they weren't emo. Because it is, you need you need that constant there to inspire your momentary blips. It's like saying, oh. I'm going to live a happy, healthy life within my means every single day, or I'm going to spend all my money on this one blowout weekend and then do nothing else until next month when I've got money again. It's that we waited for emo to come around and it was big and it was exciting and it kills me that there's people on Twitter and YouTube these days going, oh my God, that generation had it so good. I wish I grew up in 2000 to 2006. And it's like, oh, wow. It's 2018, that's really old, but it wouldn't exist without the constants keeping it, keeping the world ticking over. So we always had, okay, emo's finished, we've got something to go back into. Oh, now this is the thing that's suddenly a big thing. I mean, emo for us was probably the same as punk was in the 70s. And, you know, emo was the, the, the 2000s for us anyway. And you know what's replaced emos? No. Eating fucking washing tabs. Well, yeah. The the in, the the internet destroyed having fads because there was not everybody was a punk in the seventies, not everybody was a rocker in the eighties, not everyone's a hippie in the sixties, but that's what you remember. Two thousands, you had loads of different genres, but emo was but probably everyone had one. MySpace. Exactly. And as much, as much as I desperately want to call this in the favour of Emo, if only because I think John's upset because he told us all he was coming to school with his Pete Wentz hair, and it wasn't quite Pete Wentz hair, I'm going to go in the favour of Goth, because without that inspiration, the Emo would never have existed. Yeah! Woo! However, if you've got a picture of your Pete Wentz hair anywhere, I would love to see it again. Don't think I do. Oh, I'm sure I can find one. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the look on your face when we were all trying to be supportive. And we went, yeah, it looks really good. And you just looked at us all like square in the eyes and went, she didn't do what I asked. Ah, uh, what a science lesson. That was with this dog But you know who... Uh... You know who who took it to the extreme? JR and his crazy lopsided bright red mohawk. Yeah? Yeah. Kudos to uh, JR. But I do miss I do miss the emo days. They were good days. They were they helped me discover myself, but not because of emo, it was the music and you guys getting me into that music. You know, you guys going So why did you vote Matt? Goth? Because Emo wouldn't exist without goth. You've got to go with the, the base ingredients. So you want to walk around in shopping centres wearing nothing but black and moping around and like being a complete nihilist because that's that's what being a goth's about. No, oh, it's, like, no it's like saying, would you rather have a steak or a cow? I can't have the steak without the cow, so I've got to go cow. Anyway, we're ruining questions that I've got for the next time I ask them. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I've got, I've got to go with goth. Yeah, but I don't want to have a cow in my house. I want a steak on my plate. I don't want a cow in my house. I think of how uh, many steaks you could get from the cow. Your selection you is illogical. Well, it doesn't oh matter my God. because guess what? I'm back in fucking John. Don't make another bad pun because I'll take it away. <laughs> I, haven't abu- I haven't abused my power this week. Don't make me. Um, yeah, just to, just, yeah, and between, between you and, and the people that educated me in the ways of music, you went, hey Matt, look at this band, they're really good, they're called My Chemical Romance, and I went, oh thanks, I really like them, six months later you all went, no, no, you're not allowed to listen to them, bad, bad Matthew, don't listen to My Chemical Romance, and I've never been more confused in my life, and that is a band that sums up emo, I still like them to this day. Within six months, apparently, we were supposed to hate them. But, inspired by Goth, Goth wins. John wins. 
John's asking three questions next week. Episode 25 next week. Is it episode 25 next week? Yeah. Well, it's been emotional. I've been John. And some things never change. And I've been John. And I've been a scene. It's not a goddamn scene. It's an arms race. <laughs> and I've been not John. Sorry for the pause. I was trying to think of a music pun. And the only thing I can think of is it's been reggae, reggae good being back in charge. <laughs> this has been Wood John Rather. Tune in next week for Wood John or Not John Rather, where we are podcast, where we ask each other questions. <laughs> And sometimes right, we've, we got a, we've got a week to streamline this. <laughs> need, to, need to sort this out. Need to brainstorm yeah. off air. We could get this shit sorted. Next week it'll just be welcome to WJRWJJRRJWRJNJR. Parentheses JR. Parentheses. I think yes. that would be a. I think that would be a grave mistake. That was a golf pun. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Your tears, Your tears don't, don't fall. They, they crash, crash around, around me. me. Her conscience calls. The guilty guilty come. come home. Does it? You've got to just sing. Don't wait for me to sing and then try and catch up. No, I quit.